Have you ever watched a super satisfying, seemingly impossible video and wonder, hmm, I wonder how they did that? Well, the answer is actually most often with 3D rendering. And that's exactly what I'll be showing you guys how to do in this video. So the other day I found myself watching compilations of these satisfying videos and just really enjoying it. So naturally I decided to make this super unsatisfying animation here and I posted it all over social media. And of course you guys kind of hated me for it, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was funny. But ultimately, I am a nice person, so I will satisfy your needs and show you guys how to easily create this ultra satisfying animation in Blender 3D. With all the tips and tricks and secrets on how it's done. Hey, you wanna know what else is super satisfying? Having all of your passwords, credit card, and personal info being auto-filled for you online while being stored away in a safe, secure, easy to access account using Dashlane. Dashlane is the password manager that I personally use myself now after having some of my accounts get hacked into last year. And it's been great for protecting all of my personal info while making the web an easy to use, one-click auto-fill experience, whether you're logging into accounts or checking out with purchases. Dashlane is a mobile and desktop app and is completely free to use on your first device, plus you get a free 30-day trial of their premium service. And that includes some useful features like a private VPN and more. So go ahead and try them out with a link in the description below. No credit card info or anything needed at checkout, so you might as well give them a shot. And now let's start creating. So starting off in Blender 2.82, we're gonna go ahead and delete the default cube by hitting X along with the lamp, just to give the cube a little bit of company in the trash can. And we'll go ahead and go shift A and add in a UV sphere. This will be our first swinging ball and we'll need a cable for that to swing by. So we'll go shift A and also add in a cylinder. We'll just pull that cylinder up along the Z axis and then scale it down nice and thin by going S, X, and Y to scale it down on every axis but the Z axis. Here I'm just gonna tab into edit mode then and grab the vertices and move them down so the origin point is at the top of the cylinder. This way it will rotate from that origin point. So now I'm just gonna go face select mode, grab that bottom face on the cylinder, and then just pulling that face down till we have a nice long cable for that ball to swing on. Something like this looks about right. And then you can go ahead and move that up so it's connected to the top of the ball there. Perfect, now we wanna join them together by first selecting the ball and then shift selecting the cylinder and going control J to join both of these meshes into one. Now you can see when I rotate it, it's rotating on that origin point from the cylinder. We'll go ahead and click on the dev view just to give ourselves a nice looking viewport here. Now with the origin point still on our UV sphere, we're gonna go shift A and add in a circle. We're gonna go ahead and hit R and 90 degrees to rotate it along the X axis. As you can see, it's exactly lined up with the UV sphere. We're just gonna scale it up to be a little bit larger than this. Now still in edit mode, you're gonna wanna make sure you're in vertice select mode by checking the little box there. Then we're gonna go control R and double tap G to add two vertices at the top of our circle right before our cable that's coming down. This is so we can then delete that center vertice right in the middle if we choose the reveal hidden vertices there and then X and delete that vertice right in the middle there. Now with all of our vertices selected, we can zoom out grabbing them all and hitting E to extrude them out a bit larger. Pick a nice sort of size similar to what I have here and then we'll go over to the modifier tab, add in a solidify modifier. We'll start off by changing the offset to zero so the axis is in the middle and then we'll just adjust the thickness to, so it's just as thick as it is wide so we have a nice sort of cylinder that's bent in that circle shape. Next up, we're gonna add in another modifier. This will be the subdivision surface modifier to give ourselves a nice rounded looking bent cylinder here. So go ahead and increase the view count there a little bit right click to shade smooth and then tab into edit mode and we're gonna go control R and just tighten up those corners up at the top there by putting in an edge loop and sliding it up to give it a nice sharp edge. All right, so now it's time to start animating that ball to swing back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little bit more room in the timeline here. We're gonna split our window so we can open up a graph editor over on the left side here. So I'm gonna start off by grabbing that hanging sphere there and in right orthographic view, I'm going to grab that sphere and rotate it 30 degrees. This is what I found to be a good amount of rotation for our swinging motion and then I need a keyframe so checking the automatic keyframe insertion there and then just grabbing my sphere and letting go will automatically add a keyframe there on frame one. Now I'm going to jump to frame 120 as I found that to be a good amount of time between frames for a 60 FPS animation 
and rotate it 60 degrees negative. This will give me the exact opposite. And as you can see, scrubbing through the keyframes here, we have our first animation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give ourselves just 240 frames as we want this to be a looping animation and then copy the first keyframe all the way to frame 240. Here you can see that it'll now come back. That's looking great. And I'm just going to switch over to our render settings real quick and choose 60 FPS as our frame rate. Now, if you want to adjust the swinging motion a little bit of that ball by giving it a little bit more weight and maybe making it take a little bit more time to come to a stop and then gain more speed, we can grab the handles here in the graph editor and just scale them to something like a 1.2. And if we scale them all the same, this will basically give ourselves a little bit more of that gradual swinging motion. And this will sort of adjust the weight and feel of that ball. So you might want to play around with these to get the right animation feeling that you're going for just scale all of them the exact same amount now i'm just going to go ahead and hit n to bring up the properties tab here in the graph editor choosing the drop down on our object i'm going to go ahead and uncheck the visibility and all of the different axes except for the x rotation axis and then going to the modifiers tab here i'm going to add in a new modifier on that axis. We're gonna choose cycles, and this will just make our simulation loop perfectly in Blender. So now we need to make this crazier with a second swinging ball. So I'm just gonna go Shift D with our sphere selected, and go ahead over to our graph editor and turn off the X rotation and turn on the Z rotation. Here I'm gonna go G and grab all the keyframes on the Z rotation and just grab them along the Y 90. This will move it up in the timeline and give it a perfect 90 degrees rotation along the Z axis. But there's an issue, the balls are hitting each other right at the center and that's not exactly satisfying, that's sort of the opposite of satisfying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our second ball that we just duplicated and we're gonna turn on all of the axes over in the graph editor here. And then I'm just gonna grab the three keyframes down in our timeline and move these 60 frames to the left. Here you can see now that that would offset the keyframes. So as the one is on its swing up, the other is on its swing down and they never collide with each other which is a lot more satisfying in my opinion. So before the next step of our animation, I wanna quick add in a plane here for the floor. I'm just gonna go shift A, add in that plane, and then line it up to be right underneath our cylinder there. Then selecting the cylinder, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees on frame one. So it's automatically gonna add a keyframe there just to be in line with our first swinging ball. So it's going right through the center of it. Then grabbing our cylinder, jumping to frame 60. I'm going to go ahead and go to top view, rotate it 90 degrees along the Z axis. So now it's lining up perfectly at frame 60 with the second ball coming. And I might see a pattern here. We're just gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the keyframes, jumping to frame 120, rotating it 60 degrees along the Z axis and so forth until we have animations all the way across our 240 frames, which will make it line up perfectly with our swinging balls. Now just selecting all of the keyframes in the graph editor on that cylinder, I'm gonna go V and choose vector as the keyframe handle type. This will allow it to spin with no sort of curve between it as it's gonna spin at a consistent speed the whole time now. And as you can see, that works just perfectly with our ball swinging through it. Okay, so now it's time for a few quick materials and some rendering. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give our floor a little bit of thickness, split our window and open up a shader editor over on the left here. And to close off the properties tab and create a new material. Here I'm gonna jump up to the blender preferences and enable the node wrangler as this helps with materials a ton for doing simple basic materials. It speeds up your workflow a ton. So enable the node wrangler. And here I'm gonna use a few PBR materials from CC0 Texture Textures.com. It's a great website with all kinds of free textures that you can download. I think most of these are all made in Substance Painter, but go ahead and download some of these PBR materials. I use some of the metal and paint materials for my surfaces here. So go ahead and download them. I'll link it in the description. So with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, all we have to do now is grab our PBR shader and go Control Shift T. And this will allow us to open up all the PBR materials at one time. So going to wherever you saved out those textures, grabbing all of the PBR textures in that folder. And you can see here, if I switch to the thumbnail view, we can see what they look like. We have them all there and click open. You can see that with the Node Wrangler add-on, we automatically open up the roughness and normal maps. We're gonna go ahead and delete the displacement as we don't need that. But here you can see it did all of the hard work for us. We have our normal map, our roughness map, and our color map all opened up. I'm just switching over to cycles here now and choosing GPU compute as I can render a whole lot faster using a GPU. And it will render even faster if you enable optics and you have an RTX GPU because Blender is now RTX accelerated and will render almost twice as fast in most cases when you're enabling optics. So switching to rendered view here, we can see that wood PBR material that I opened up there on our floor and it's looking pretty cool, but it needs a little bit of lighting. So we're gonna jump over to our environment settings and open up an HD 
HDR from HDR Haven. Again, I'll link to it in the description where you guys can grab that. But opening up that HDR, you can see we have a much nicer looking result right now. And that PBR material is also looking really cool. So now let's quick set up our camera for a nice rendered animation. So I'm just going to grab our camera up there in the outliner and then go alt control zero to snap it to my view. As I found an angle from about 45 degrees on the scene, it looks nice. I'm going to increase the strength of that HDR up to about a 1.5 over in the environment settings and then under film enable transparent so we have a transparent background on our scene cool so now i'm just going to add in a few more pbr materials by grabbing our sphere going new material over in our shader editor and then going Control shift t with node rangular to open up an entire pbr material all at one time by grabbing our painted material here and selecting them all and here you can see it's working really nice you do just want to double check to make sure that it got the right material in every case because as you can see here for the metallic color it actually opened up the wrong texture as the naming scheme kind of messed it up so in this case you just have to open up the right texture for that um, output but it definitely speeds up your workflow quite a bit using the shortcut and the node rangular add-on so just repeating the same step on the red sphere there giving it a red painted material as well i'm just repositioning my camera and making my aspect ratio a little bit more square as i found it worked well for this animation then you might want to jump over to your render settings and enable motion blur as that looks really nice rendered in cycles with an animation like this and then we'll also go to our camera settings and over on the right here we can enable depth of field and then change the f-stop down to something like a 0.5 for a nice shallow depth of field effect if we enable limits in the viewport display you can see that plus is going to be our focused object so i'm just adjusting the distance here then to make sure that plus is right on our spinning cylinder and that will work nicely then you can go to the color management settings over in your render settings and we'll just change the look to be a medium high contrast as it gives a little bit more contrastiness to our scene then before we do a final render we're going to jump over to our render layers here and enable the denoising data so running a quick render here you can see we have our nice ball swing and animation i'm just going to switch to the compositing tab click use nodes and you can see we have those extra passes there for the denoising data we're going to go ahead and go shift a add in a filter denoise and then just connect the denoising albedo to albedo the denoising normal to the normal and then the noisy image to the image Control shift click that denoise node to add a viewer node and you can see we have a clean image here is before he was after, and it's definitely a lot cleaner. Now I'm gonna show you a quick tip to add in a nice sort of gradient background behind our satisfying simulation animation here. And by doing that, I'm just gonna go Shift A and add in a box mask. Here I'm gonna go ahead and make the size to be a 0.45 on both the X and Y axis. Then I'm gonna go Shift A and add in a blur change it to Gaussian blur, connecting it up right there. We'll change it to Y and then give it an X and Y blur of about a 15 to 16 amount. Blurring it like this gives ourselves a nice sort of vignette gradient look. Then I'm just gonna add in a color mix node. We'll change it to soft light. We'll move the blur node to be connected into the factor of that soft light. And then for that top socket, I'm just gonna pick a nice sort of blue gray material. And this just gives us a nice sort of soft gradient light with a little bit of a brighter inside and a darker outside, which I thought looked kind of nice. Then I'm just gonna add in a color alpha over node connecting our denoised image to the bottom and our nice gradient to the top. Control shift clicking that. And there you have it. You can see we have our finished rendered image ready to be rendered as an animation. Now, if you want to add even more intensity to that light, you can just duplicate that soft light and repeat it one more time. So you get a nice overlay, making it even brighter in the center. And then for a little bit of a vignette effect, you can duplicate your box mask and your blur node, increase the blur maybe a little bit more this time, and then duplicate that mixed node one more time, switch it to multiply this time. And then if you connect the blur to the bottom socket, you can see we add in a vignette. We'll go ahead and turn the factor down and that just gives a nice little subtle vignette over the whole scene too. Connect your last output to the composite node and the viewer node, and you'll be ready to start rendering an animation out. Switching over to the render settings here, just to show you the file that I usually use for animations, I use FFmpeg video and then change the encoding container over to MPEG4. This is what I found to be a good file format just for test renders. And if you hit rendered animation right now, after choosing an output, you'd be ready with your rendered animation. Here is the final result that you can see we have. But that's going to wrap up this video, guys. I hope you had some fun and found it ultra satisfying. If you did, you can leave a like on the video. Or if you had a question, you can leave it in the comment section below. I'd again like to thank Dashlane for sponsoring this video. You can check them out with the link in the description. But that's going to do it for me, guys. And keep on creating. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.